my introduction, I'll explain how imperative it is to have a person like Fritzy um, as part of the dynamics. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I, look at Fritzy's my mentor. I have said this to her. She trained myself and Eve. Um, I hold her on a pedestal. She's an author in Aging in Place. You know, she's written books for the, at, you know, at the national level for the um, housing um, for the NAHB. So she kind of knows what she she's doing. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness Peter knew me from the old days when I still didn't know anything. So I just find it heartwarming that the two of you guys see each other here out of all things 20 something years later. But um, getting back to the real estate side of it, or let alone anything in the senior market, we know that um, this age demographics is ever growing. We also know that people by the eight, by 2035, that baby boomer will reach 65. We also know that um, they will outnumber those under the age of 19 years old for the first time in history. And coupled with less than 7% of our nation's housing units can actually accommodate somebody that, you know, has a mobility issue. And so being educated in the aging in place sector is, I think, imperative and important. Um, and so welcome everybody who's just joining us. Um, I am here introducing Fritzi Grodion. Welcome, Fritzi. Um, if you drop off here, by the way, it is being recorded and so we'll have it out for, uh, up tomorrow. Um, after this, Fritzy, um, will answer questions for you. Mm -hmm. So please hold on the last about 15 minutes. Um, she does teach classes and she'll talk about it, but just to kind of give you a background, she, I, Fritzy, <laughs> thank you for coming. <laughs> But I mean, she she's a, an award-winning author, and she's working on a new um, a new book and a new educational series, correct, for grab bar installation as well. So, welcome to our little group. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so <sighs> clearly, somehow, um, Heather and Eve went from st graduate students to fan club. I don't know how that exactly happened, but I am really thrilled to be here with your group because in this very short period of time, the two of you have just absolutely accelerated this kind of an opportunity because this opportunity exists for all of the students that I teach and you have really taken it to heart and can see now what the market looks like uh, in a way that I will tell you, even five years ago when I was teaching, it was still like going to be a good idea, going to be a good idea. And now it's like right up here. It's, it's like right in front of us. And it's a fabulous idea. So um, yes, I'm uh, Fritzi Grodion. <laughs> I am now um, here in California. I came to California in 2012. And I have been in Southern California until four and a half months ago, and now I'm in Northern California, um, but I am still teaching thanks to Zoom. Uh, when I was in New York and when I knew Peter on a day-to-day -day chamber of commerce kind of way, um, I had an environmental company for 20 years there. I worked in the environmental company and then owned it for a while. So I was in people's homes also uh, commercial residential spaces, understanding uh, hazardous materials, et cetera. Uh, for 10 years, kind of in the middle of that time, I also was a senior move manager. So I started senior move management in 2001. It wasn't an industry yet. And so it took me a long time to kind of build that market and help people understand what senior move management was. And that was those, many of those stories are the, parts of my book, The Grace and Grit. Uh, but during that time, and you know, watching my mom um, age in place as well, of all the people, I mean, we moved a thousand families or persons, right? In that first 10 years. And I can think of three of them personally who were excited to move to assisted living. 
And I'm sure other people were happy to do it, but people want to stay home. I mean, they, they've, whether they've been in their home 40 years or they've been in their home 10 years, the idea of, especially later in life, doing that move was just so traumatic. And you can invite me back to talk all about, about that sometime, about how hard that is on folks. But my Encore career is aging in place. And so that's, I, when I came to California, I did environmental consulting at first, asbestos lead-based paint work. Um, but I have moved with the household guardian space really into aging in place. And I have an opportunity now to be an instructor um, with NAHB. Um, my work with Age Safe America is also on the education side. And we have developed an online course the uh, Senior Home Safety Specialist, uh, which is a certification course. And yes, we do have some new programs in development. So that's about all you need to know about me, probably a great deal more than you, you actually needed to know. Uh, so about aging in place, a couple of things. One of the things that we want to understand for people really of all ages, but that group between you know, that our older Americans, like raising your hand for it right here, um, is that falls and fall related injuries are the leading cause of death among people over 65. More people die in the US from falls than car accidents or diseases, right? So it's frightening and it's happening. So, Fall prevention is really, we talk to it as a preventable epidemic. And I'm sure you'll have someone talk about all of the components of falls and why they happen and some things, but there's a couple of points I'd like to make here. One is we hear when a person falls, at least a third of them will fall a second time within a year. If they're over 80, one in two of them will fall again, right? And part of the reason is that when we fall, our brain changes, right? When we're, when we're created as a human, our brain's big job is to keep us safe. And when we fall, the brain says that wasn't right. And so I'm gonna do everything in my power every single day to protect you. And what that means is I will, you won't raise your feet quite as high. Your steps won't be quite as long. I'm, I'm going to do something. I won't send messages to the rest of your body that will allow you to walk as fast or whatever. And it's subtle. But that's part of the reason that we get set up for the second fall. Because we don't really have any control over that gyroscope. So there's lots of things we can do. And I will tell you, based on the size of the crowd here this evening, all of you are statistically protected from falling in your lives because I have fallen now statistically enough for all of you. So just consider yourselves safe, live a good life and uh, you know, peace be with you. I have asphalt under the, my skin here from 2014, January 30th. Yeah, I've got another scar over here. Yeah, believe me, you all are gonna be good, but you gotta follow all the rules anyway. So that's, that's part of it about falling. The other piece is, my presumption was during COVID that those fall statistics would change, right? The fall statistics, the University of Michigan did a study got worse and they got worse because people weren't moving, right? We weren't as mobile, we weren't walking, we weren't maintaining our flexibility, right? And we were home a lot. So in addition to that, whatever might've been in the house, we might've just accumulated like some of the mail or some of the, clutter in the house that didn't get out easily, right? So they found that fall rates actually went up during COVID. And in their study, they found that 40% of the people who fell did not receive nor or seek medical attention when they thought they needed it. So they didn't even try to get help during that time. So all of those things, whatever might've happened, that little, that little dislocation of the shoulder or that little bit of this or that little bit of that, if they weren't really hurt, 
then that all now is added up. And as we start to move out and regain our mobility, et cetera, we're just still set up for that. So that's kind of my big pitch about <laughs> fall prevention and, and why, as we're beginning to look at our homes, so many of the modifications that are easy uh, for us to implement and to suggest to folks should be uh, part of what we're part of what we're doing. Um, I am going to. Oh, by the way, if however Eve and Heather run this, if they make you put the questions in chat or whatever, but if you're not too rambunctious and they don't mind. You could also just wave and ask me questions because I don't mind being interrupted, just so you know. We we <laughs> encourage anybody to just chime in. We like to respect the host, the person that we our guest speaker and what they would like. So I appreciate you letting everybody know. But yeah. we do encourage people to ask because that's why we're here and that's why we have you. And that's okay. why we put this group together. So <laughs> okay. Take um, it away. I Thank you. I am going to try to switch and just put up just a few slides about the aging in place space here. I'm um, so I can share my screen. Let yes, me just you make do have you have those okay. capabilities. Um, all right, and slideshow show from start. Okay, can you all see this house with the lawn? Okay, great. All right. <laughs> Make your home a house for the lifetime. Um, this is a very a short piece of an NAHB presentation, and I did put my Household Guardians logo here. Um, the purpose here is really just to show that here we have a completely integrated design for this house. We have stairs to the front and over to the left, integrated in the design, we have a a ramp up to the same porch, right? But there's nothing that screams, this isn't a big aluminum portable ramp in front of the house that says somebody with some kind of challenge lives here. And a lot of people are nervous sometimes about doing that because they're afraid their house will just scream, there's a problem here um, to anybody driving by. So this is one way just to see how the, space can be integrated. So the idea about aging in place is to make our homes a home for a lifetime and comfortable, stylish, functional, and beautiful. All of those components are part of what the training is as it relates to an aging in place specialist. Um, and this talks to some of the things that people who are through here um, and are certified aging in place specialists can help you with. So this training, and I'll go into what it is, really will be able to help a client identify what some of their needs are, uh, learning how to talk and ask the questions to help determine what it is that's going on for them. And in lots of cases, there's a huge market of people completely well who are just gonna plan for it or are taking other people into consideration. So through this process and through this training, there's an opportunity to learn about um, talking with customers, et cetera, um, and, um, concepts for the design and the improvements there. So the CAPS designation <laughs> developed uh, with the AARP and the National Home Builders is the Certified Aging in Place designation. And I think pretty much that was all I wanted just to show as a way to get into our discussion about that. Um, uh, so I'm going to just stop there and how do I stop sharing my screen? <laughs> so now I can just talk with you all. Um, so this, this training is, it's a three-day training that, um, 
has a day talking about uh, marketing and selling and determining what is the aging in place market. Because truly, every day we're blessed to wake up, we're aging in place. And so it's not, it's not a different concept. <laughs> you know, I, I think back to like, what could I have done for my grandmother who lived in an apartment 13 stairs up above a farm machinery store in Vermont? You know, what could I have done for her? And um, she was aging in place, but she was my grandma. I mean, we didn't, we just didn't think in those terms and we didn't really look at her home. I looked much more carefully at my mother's home because I was already shifting my thinking into this space. Okay, back to CAPS. <laughs> so the CAPS course is the first day is really looking at what the market segments are. And we learn about the demographics. So you talk about, you know, what percentage of baby boomers and they're gonna be more than people right under 18 in, in so many years. The first of the baby boomers are already 70, right? And the, the demographic that I would like you all to really consider too is that there will be over half a million people over the age of 100 by 2050. There'll be almost 700,000 people over the age of 100. So never mind people who are 70 and 80 now, but Lord willing, a bunch of us are gonna live right up to being 100 or more. That's why they can't do that Smuckers thing on to the Today Show anymore because there's too many people. They spent the whole Today Show reading everybody's name, right? So, um, okay, sorry, back to the class. You girls are gonna have to keep me on track here. So the first day is this marketing and selling, but looking at that marketplace and really trying to figure out how can we best serve the marketplace. And one of the sentences I use is, you know, avoiding, you have to avoid too much enthusiasm and trying to help everybody, which was clearly my issue early on with Household Guardians. Um, but it, it really helps focus on looking at different niches and where can we be best of service to things that meet our skills, what our business has, and then how does it work best um, being able to reach out and target that segment as well. The second part of the class, you wanna say something? Um, well, I was gonna say, oh, you're getting the second part of the class, which was the, what I was gonna say, so go for it. <laughs> Okay, so the second the second day is um, design concepts. So we talk about the five basic design concepts, universal, adaptable, accessible, visitable, and livable in some detail. And then we spend a lot of time general house systems and then going room by room and looking at what are the design ideas and how do we look at what's existing in someone's home and make the best choices or help them make the best choices possible? So we're looking at things that are hidden, things that we don't think about right away, like where is that breaker panel and why is the refrigerator in front of the breaker panel in the garage? <laughs> like why? Um, so that, we, that whole day covers from the design and putting a lot of ideas that include product ideas as well. It's like we've, the marketplace is really starting to catch up to the development of a, a broader range of uh, products. I'm gonna just put that on the side so I don't get off on a tangent here. Okay, the third day of our training um, deals with some more on some construction techniques related to ramps, wall reinforcement, curbless showers, some of the bigger pieces. And then there's a lot of case studies. Um, and that's really my part of my joy teaching is to be able to put people together from different backgrounds. So real estate, occupational therapy, um, builders, remodelers, attorney, I mean, people from every profession are now understanding that there is learning to be had here that will help them look at their market. So in the after, you know, in the third day, we actually learn from each other 
and we work on case studies and home modification examples. So that's that course. Um, and um, I do, I teach it, you know, this way, live via Zoom <laughs> um, every month. And uh, it's, it's nice to be able to commit to doing three days in a row, but I teach every month and I encourage people to take it when they can. So if you can do CAPS 1 one month, two another month, three another month, you're still gonna get the learning, uh, but it's not as, as big a commitment as unless you can make that for the three days in a row. And some people do two days. Um, that's I try to be as flexible as possible in that regard. So give it. So looking, let's just kind of give an overview of if you were to walk into um, some um, one of our houses. I try to be as flexible as possible. <laughs> well, we were to walk into, let's so say, let's, so looking, let's just kind of give an overview. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm hearing myself over on, on on Facebook. Sorry about that. Um, if you were to walk into Ellen Fostoff's house and it's two stories and what are some of the things that you would be looking for as you were to walk into the house just to give us a few examples of people who don't know what some of those techniques would be or some of those okay that's a beautiful segue Heather to the front door exercise very nice very smooth so for each of you, I would like you to think about your own front door. Visualize your own front door. All righty. So here we go. You ready? Do you have steps up to your front door? Do they have open risers or closed risers? Do they have handrails on one side or both sides? Are they loose? Do they have safety balusters? When you step up on the steps up to the porch, is there still another step, another threshold up into the house? Do you have a doormat? Does the doormat non-slip? Do you have a lighted doorbell? Do you have a, a physical light over the door? Do you have a motion sensor light focused at the lock? Do you have a small table to put the packages or an entry shelf located on the latch side of the door? So you're not reaching back across, but is it right there for you to do that? And that's just a very small sliver of what someone like Fritzy or somebody with a CAPS designation will go in and do to make sure that you don't have to fumble for your keys or you don't have to fumble because you can't see because of the lighting. We all know that the lighting is one of the key features to helping um Asian place and it's one of the cheapest to to do I would think mm -hmm. right Fritzy yep absolutely absolutely so there's very small little things that people could be doing right now like taking getting rid of those carpets those little mats that you have around they don't do any they don't do you anything help they don't help <laughs> <laughs> right? right that's a right right. Answer. right so yeah um, and actually there are some really vital safety things to do in every room that you can start to think about. And, um, I will tell you a few years ago, I wrote a blog called look with my eyes, and it was really addressed to adult children going home to see their parents at the holidays and to look for these kinds of changes. I said, you don't have to walk around with a clipboard, but look at things differently. Look at the doorway, look at the pathways, look at the rugs, look at those things and look at your parents. And what are those changes that you may wanna be able to initiate a conversation about? So it's, it's the same, it's the idea that instead of just tonight sitting and listening and then thinking about your front door, like actually go outside. Some of you are on the East Coast, so you're gonna, the sun's gonna go down in what, an hour and a half, but you know, go out and just walk in the front door and just look at it differently. And then as you go into kind of every front door after that, you're gonna start to notice some of these 
um, opportunities to make those changes. But yes, in, in many of the rooms and um, thank you, Lewis, for joining us as well. This is my opportunity to say hello to Lewis Tenenbaum. One of the, we all know about how many people fall in the bathroom. And um, we had a campaign a few years ago through Age Safe America, which was grab bars are the new seat belts. We all didn't think, them, think we needed them when they came out either, right? So this doing the grab bar installations and the product selection now for those safety products, right? Towel bars, toilet paper holders, soap dishes. There are so many accessories that have been designed by a range of manufacturers that make the aesthetics, the bathroom can still be beautiful, but it can be safer. And it can be safer really pretty easily. And the, the important work right now that Lewis is doing uh, with Homes Renewed is to have our the legislation, the federal legislation to allow for a tax uh, incentive for people to do home modifications for aging in place and for safety and universal design, all of those categories, but primarily to be able to make our homes safer and to look at this whole industry, this aging in place and um, whether it's consulting or actually making the product changes available, um, his Lewis's vision and the vision of his team <laughs> is really to, to provide that tax incentive that will build this industry and this niche the way the solar industry was built with those tax incentives. Well, so that's also, also I believe ahead. it's the um, as well as like your, you know, the, your yellow star products that were energy mm -hmm. saving products. Right. It's that same um, same concept. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, when you look at like, you know, Medicare, Medicaid and insurance, you don't yeah. have, you have very few things that are paid through or through it. Um, and like you said, now that we're living so much longer um, our financial means have to be stretched mm -hmm. and are thinner. So I can see how it is. I think another misconception that perhaps you can kind of help us with is when people say aging in place, it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean the home that you're currently in. You know, I mean, they right. think I think that's a misconception because they think that's like, I've been here for 50 years, I'm going to stay here another 50 years because of the way we're living. However, you might have to end up like tearing the house down and redoing it because it's already 60 or 70 years old. Well, I think Ellen raised her yeah. hand here. We, 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 we were supposed to go to Ellen's house. I'm sorry, <laughs> I got, we, got, we got stuck at the front door at Ellen's house and you gave us a two-story house. So I wanna see if Ellen has some more things that she needs to tell us about her house here well I'll tell you one thing I never use the stairs to go to the second floor anymore no I'm kidding uh I just wanted to go back a second in the mm -hmm. concept you were talking about for incentives and stuff like that people who are over 65 and let's say they have health insurance and a lot of the um senior advantage programs have over-the-counter products what about getting in touch with those companies that provide mm -hmm. those products and have them incorporate them as part of the package mm -hmm. to these homeowners or these seniors mm -hmm. so they don't have to have it out of pocket, but they can have provisions that mm -hmm. they can order? Well, the guy who is the head of this bill, that is, it's a bipartisan bill, he is on this call, so he can speak up and maybe he's worked that angle, I don't know. Lewis? Um, so so two things. Thanks, Fritzy. You know, I haven't taught CAPS in, in a long time, and I can tell that you do a wonderful job. So I really appreciate <laughs> it. Um, but one thing about not remaining in your home of many years 
is that a lot of people move for really good reasons, you know, to move far from family, near family, near an educational institution, near the mountains, near the shore, near a, uh, um, so there's plenty of good reasons. Aging in place doesn't mean you have to stay in the home where you spent your working years or raised your family or, or any of those. Um, and I, I think that's where a lot of the anti-aging in place or aging in the right place, people come in and really misconstrue what we mean, which is that it's a home you can stay in. Your home is sustainable and helps you remain resilient, not necessarily a home that you have memories, good or bad or, or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I agree that the, the bill that we had um, or have going would certainly allow new builders to include these features and products and provide a, a special section of receipt. That's how I picture it. I'm, I'm not a tax guy or anything. And I hope this answers your question a little bit, Ellen, that they would provide a receipt for those factors in the home, both a, a labor and materials receipt. And then you could use that in your next year's tax um, uh, forward tax tax um, filing. So um, these features, people often say, well, why don't we also approach new homes? And, and we're not, not approaching new homes. The fact is we build, you know, on a good year, 8 million homes and we have a hundred million homes already. So those 100 million homes will be um, living in, most of us will be living in. And I, I, I hope that that speaks in some way to your question. And thank you for the opportunity to join you all tonight. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, and the, the other, one of those other pieces that, that we were talking about, Heather, was the, the age of our homes across the country, right? I mean, they 40% of our homes are, are 50 years old or older now. And so not only are the design features different, but we've got, you know, plumbing and electrical and all of those other issues that if somebody's doing these home modifications, there may be costs to that that are something that you wouldn't have thought of necessarily with the project, but Bring there are. To, to like, yeah, to, to bring the house up to code. And I don't know, are there, are there designers here? Do you have any designers you raise your hand right before I make my comment? <laughs> oh, this is on Facebook, I'm gonna be kind. But the fact of the matter is at this point, who invented sunken living rooms, right? <laughs> right? right? Right, who invented the split level? You go in six stairs down, six stairs up. I, I did live in, in one of those homes one time and I was young and the house was fine. But um, a lot of those opportunities and the way those homes are, there are things we can do that will still make them manageable and, and help us keep that independence and, and resilience that, that Lewis is talking about. But, and, Certainly the other piece of looking across this whole marketplace is our health span as it relates to our lifespan. And that's some vocabulary that we're starting to see in the literature now where we may live to a hundred, you know, but are we going to begin to have morbidities or comorbidities at 80 that would have been fine you know, God bless my grandmother, she passed at 85. So she had some challenges, but she had them for five years. If I have her challenges, am I going to have them for 20 years? And so as I look at doing some of these things, what can I do that will make even that easier? You know, the and adding the lighting, that's, you and Eve both know I'm a big lighting person, even though I'm not officially trained in lighting color and rendering well, and all of that people, business but what i think what people don't realize is the statistics of mm -hmm. the of the positive part of lighting um mm -hmm. and and how it could change um one's way of seeing the you know differentiates you know different 
things within their house on the floor specifically versus the yeah. walls versus the light. Well, um, yeah, there, yeah, there's so many things they just don't even know about that exist yeah. that could solve right. problems that they're just living with. Right. And it's interesting because I think, what was the statistic that we, by the age of 40? Oh, or, it takes, it, it, you have, it, by the age of 40, you need 20 times more light to see as well at night as you did at the age of 20. So it's, it's monumentally, we need more and more light, especially at night, of course. Now that we're living longer, I, you know, I, I know that, that yeah. <laughs> I, it's, right, right. But I, and I think what's important too, is to understand how many of these manufacturers are finally beginning to get the message that Joseph Coughlin wrote in the longevity economy. I mean, we have this huge economy and we have what I describe as like the super highway here where a lot of us have been in particular lanes, like some people have been selling real estate, somebody has been in OT, someone has been like all of these careers. And now with this aging in place model, people are, are starting to work and cross the lanes and build niches and build businesses that um, work across those lanes. But uh, I mean, they've, they've just, I, identified manufacturers. I mean, you can see it in Kohler's hug collection, right? You can see it in the Ponte Giulio products. You can see it now in more and more products, well, the lighting got, products that are changing. You, well, you also have famous designer, furniture designers now making furniture specifically designed for these, for uh, accessibility. Uh, accessibility. Right. It's great. Right. Uh, clothing, right. Ralph Lauren, they're all making a, adaptive clothing that makes it easily accessible and not so ugly looking anymore. Right. You know? right. So right. yes, the whole market in general, it is the, it's like that one untapped market across the board that's just going to skyrocket no matter what it is, whether it's mm -hmm. electronics or right down to clothing. Um, but it's interesting to see your players in this. Like if you look statistically at someone like Best Buy for the last 15 years, they've been buying all of the senior tech, all, like senior tech, senior apps, senior, anything in the senior sector they've been buying for the last 15 years. And they're going to, they're going to come out with guns blazing in the tech world for seniors and start to do some amazing stuff. So it'll be fun to see what happens. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely will. And I think what's important for people too to think about is, although we are moving also with all of the smart home and the apps and all of those, the plugs and all of these things that can connect, there are some people for whom that environment is not a comfortable environment. And so, there are also so many new products coming out like, and they, I mean, they've been out now for a while, like the lighting on the ribbon, that's what I call it, but the tape lighting uh, that can go on, you know, under the cabinets and things like that. There are so many really clever, smart products now um, that people are starting to look at and bring to market in addition to that whole slew of apps for families and notifications and moving your appliances and doing all of those things. Those things are fine. And I will tell you, oftentimes I'll get one and try it out here at the house. You probably could tell I'm not exactly a tech wizard. Some of the things I like and I can manage, but the minute everything, the power is down and everything has to reboot, you know, it's one thing to change, put the put the right time back on the stove and put it the right time back on the coffee maker, the two most important places, but then to have to reboot all my smart plugs, it really. So well, that's, that's the biggest hurdle is, is the, the lack of feeling of control over these mm -hmm. things and the lack of customer service and patient customer service. It's, a, you know, a senior can get something installed and then the person doesn't have the patience to explain how to use it or be there on the other end of the phone to troubleshoot. Right. So that's, that's right. And all, and all of those are opportunities. Yeah. Each one of those struggles for someone is an opportunity for 
a business model or a business or an entrepreneur in a community. There are, there are just so many, when you look across this whole spectrum, there are so many places people need help with driving challenges. They need help with lots of different kinds of challenges. We have a huge percentage of the population that is faced with not just mobility challenges, but we have cognitive challenges. And that, and if you, if you, if that's a group of people with whom you want to work, there are some very specific things to do in the house that can help families with a family member with cognitive challenges, some very specific things. And learning about those, um, I think, is an opportunity for, for many people to know that the information is out there. It's not, it's not hard to find. Uh, but again, if you, if you don't even know that you could look for it, then that's the part that makes a difference. And so we just, we need to be able to encourage everyone to, to be active in that sense and reach out. If you've got a question, you know, reach out to anyone who is here on this call, reach out to this, the, the new network and, you know, post I'll, your questions. I always say educate and empower and put it out there. And it's what somebody else wants to do with that information and go forward. But um, it's an area that's, as I said, it's untapped and it, we need more people like you who have been in this environment for so long, knowing what works and what doesn't work. I mean, you, Lewis, I... Uh, I'm trying to see there. I think there's somebody else here. There's another, there's an OT on here also. I can't, I, I don't know. David, David um, I think, was on. Yeah, David was, was on. Yeah. But, but yeah. paying that forward to us is important. So, you know, can I interject for a moment? I, I really love this discussion. I, I hope you don't mind. Um, because Fritzy, I, I think you, so the question sort of becomes, is aging in place about homes and accessibility or is the aging in place about the uh, capability for individuals and, and for society to, to serve this long, longer lifespan? Um, so when you bring up transportation and we bring up the caregiver ratio and we add these other things and we see that the home being comfortable, you use the word comfortable, if these homes aren't comfortable, that the comfort of your home is foundational to all these other things working. And, and so, you know, the idea behind what I've been thinking and is now kind of some I manifest in this bill and movement around it is that it's an opportunity for us all to see that once the home is there as a place where you can be comfortable, where you can be safer, where you can fall less, where you can get care more easily and safer for the caregiver, then all the other things start to work better. And, um, you know, it's like when we have the network effect with the telephone, right? One telephone is stupid. Three telephones <laughs> is pretty good. Lots of telephones is great. But if you have, like I live on a double cul-de-sac, if most of the all of old of old farts on this cul-de-sac had accessible homes and the little bus that wants to go around stopped at six houses on this block and filled itself up, then that bus would become much more efficient than it is. Mm -hmm. and, and similarly, if there were one caregiver agency or one caregiver, um, I've heard stories that in Europe, a caregiver will have a neighborhood. They ride their bike from house to house. And at 3 p.m., if they can't, handle everybody today you know because one person wanted a longer bath than they usually wanted or something then they call to the caregiver in the next neighborhood over and say can you bike over here for an extra hour today and and that network of all these homes instead of people being networked through care and services in uh, senior housing it's a neighborhood that is mm -hmm. senior housing and um, that's aging in place to me, as well as the, the accessibility piece. I, I love the way um, that vision. I hope, oh, I hope we can see that vision. I think, you know, I kind of look at village to village and that's similar mm -hmm. to what they're doing. Right. Um, I just right. wish that it was everywhere. Um, however, we are 
we are about getting to that 15 minute mark and I do want to open it up to anybody and everybody on the call to ask questions to you. But before I do that, Fritzy um, does teach CAPS classes. And if you are interested in CAP class, um, her next class is next week, right? Yeah, Sweet. Seven, uh, September 7, 8, and 9. So uh, what is the cost? What is the cost? The, the cost is uh, $300 a day, unless you're a member of one of these big organizations. So you can pop me an email and- She'll help you. Just, uh, yeah, it's I'll otherwise, it's $250 a day for the three, each, each day for the three days. And it comes with a book, book three books and you, that are like <laughs> you'll, give, you'll, you'll give us your email or contact I'm, information. I'm going to have Eve put it in the yeah. box for everybody. Yeah. But, right, right. But I, I also do it every month. So you can look at my Household Guardians website and it will have the dates through the end of 2022. So if um, I know next week is kind of close and I would I would love to have you all in class into next week, but. <laughs> Could you please expand on Household Guardians and what you do with that as well? Um, well, Household Guardians, and it worked a little bit better when I was down in San Diego than in my new home in Northern California. But it's, I really, I just do consulting for families and uh, people interested in aging in place. So I do the evaluation of the house and make the, the recommendations. So that was the household guardians piece. And then that's the where I teach my CAPS courses are registered through household guardians. So uh, and, and, my, and my work with Age Safe America, that coursework, that certification, the senior home safety specialist certification is actually CEUs for a number of organizations. So it's a CEUs for people who are already CAPS um, it's CEUs for occupational therapists through AOTA and several state boards, um, also for remodelers who have designations. So that part is, that's a five hour online training course as well. So there's, there's different options for getting information. Um, that course is really related to just doing, is, is related to doing the home evaluations and seniors, a broader look at senior safety fire scams identity theft and then a big focus on on the things in the house like i did the few things at the front door so those are the two that we're working and then on. she's working on another one because not like her plate's not busy enough but tell them the new stuff you're working on well the new one with age safe is is, is basically a grab bar installation training course it's talked to it talks about you know, really how to do it. And that one will be for probably for professionals more likely to be doing that, but certainly for uh, people that want to learn how to do it, you know, the wall surfaces, the styles, um, job safety, the tools, all of that business. So that will be wow. a shorter online course that will be available after the middle of September. The proper placement, because that drives me crazy. If you walk into certain places and you see a handrail in a certain position and you know that that handrail is not supposed to go that way. Right, right. Well, so <laughs> I, I, I am I'm not an occupational therapist. And if we have clients that have very specific challenges, then we encourage people to seek that uh, in terms of placement. But yes, the class does talk to where the standard placements are and why. So that that's that information is out there, and it'll, there'll be a variety of um, different systems, like different anchoring systems, and it needs to be representative of what's in the marketplace right now. So that's and that's do, that and do you feel like people are like the builders and and or the seniors, whoever you choose, are more receptive now to this kind of stuff? They can see that it's going to be helpful, and they can see that it looks better, and they can appreciate it. Um, I think people still call when they need it. And we're starting to see what's happened. The other, the other piece that we didn't really mention with the COVID piece is the shift toward a lot more multi-generational housing for people who had presumed that mom or dad would move out of their home and into assisted living. That's not as 
as clear an option for them. So in some cases it works great. It's the destination, it's the next home for them. Um, but many families are starting to combine and they're starting to look differently at their flex spaces. Uh, but you know, one of the things in the grab bar course is really that they're for everybody. You know, you've got little ones that need something to hang on to by the tub or in the shower just as much as any of the rest of us. So that, yes, absolutely is the, well, and think, also the short not, answer. The other thing I have also noticed that the design, the design isn't that cold stainless steel look any longer. They actually like kind of match in bathrooms and you would have no idea that it was a, a grab bar. Right, right. Or if you want to be spectacular, you can get it in a, one of the 14 colors, right? You can get it, <laughs> you can get a bright green one that just, you know, is the accent. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm praying that they won't be like the Harvest Gold refrigerators from the 70s or the avocado dishwashers avocado, or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anybody that has any questions? Yeah, or yeah. Like We've, Ron just got a question. I'd love to talk for a second. I'm a realtor here in Charleston, South Carolina, and I am specializing in seniors and going wholehearted after that. I've worked with seniors for a long time, but you know, have really gotten myself involved with all of the senior partners out there, and I'm finding it to be a wonderful world um, of people who are like me with big, huge hearts that mm -hmm. really do care. And it's not about how many houses can I sell. One of the things that I'm really noticing as I continue to move forward in this is that the home builders will say that we are very um, forward in making this be an age in place home. And when we start talking about grab bars and additional grab bars, nobody seems to know exactly where they're going to put them. And I have a feeling that they are just going wherever. Um, so I think that that's a huge message to get out to, uh, to the industry overall, especially the Home Builders um, Association that I'm not a member of, uh, that it is really critical that they do these things the right way and it's not just putting frosting mm -hmm. on the cake. Um, when they're saying we have these great bathrooms, you know, it's a little toilet room, um, it starts to be questionable. Can I really transfer somebody to a toilet in these? Because that is the design of it right now. So it feels mm -hmm. like the um, homes that are being built in the development and you have five choices to choose from, you can make adaptations to, that they're really missing the boat, but yet they're marketing themselves as, as mm -hmm. being this wonderful panacea. So I don't Yay, know Rhonda. how we move that forward. <laughs> Absolutely. But, age but washing. It's, it's, it's very age obvious. Washing. Age washing. Yeah. It's, they're, they are getting away with the word accessible. That word I have a is, is very, um, it's thrown around like, it, like you know, like candy. Um, however, when it comes down to it, um, the biggest Part of it is when you want to go to put a grab bar in one of those accessible dwellings, they may not have blocking in that bathroom. So then you got to tear the entire wall out to put the blocking in to put and at what point was that home accessible to me at no point, because the blocking should have been there in the first place, which is why um, Fritzy uh, is <laughs> is the is one of the head educators at National Association of Home Builders. And this is something that all of the, the educators and the people behind the scenes are trying to do with the contractors um, mm -hmm. and everybody else out there that's doing the building. However, it's people like us that have those CAPS designations um, that are going, no, that's wrong. No, that's not the way it is. And to tell a builder, well, you should check with NAHB because this is the way that it's supposed to be done. And then putting it back in their face of like the, you know, thank you for letting me know, but here's what you're legally supposed to abide by as far as the National Association. Exactly. And because it was a art consultant with hanging large art, at least I was able to get them to block the walls. But in this construction <laughs> process, it still is, you know, without getting the caps right now at this very moment, yeah. you know, the best way for me to know exactly where do I tell them to put these grab bars in the future. And the other thing is, by the way, blocking a wall doesn't cost that much more. That's, uh -huh. that's the worst part of it, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty, I mean, yeah, they did. They did a study actually in Canada with a new home builder, and they found out that a whole they did 
eight different changes and the total increased cost to the project was like $400. Yeah, crazy. And oh. it was astonishing. So, and I see Terry's got her hand raised too. I don't want to be the manager of the class well, here. I, I just want to know when they're going to stop putting the microwave over the oven. Yep. They've yeah. got that, that beautiful oven is right at a great height for somebody that can stand up and put it to the camera nicely. But then you look up and there's the microwave. I think you're going to find that there's more and more builders who are putting it in the island and it's more of the pull out drawer. I'm seeing that a lot in in the communities where you get those choices of four or five homes. So that is a positive with a lot of these builders. Yes. Yeah, more I, custom builders, I think, are doing that than your uh, mm -hmm. even semi customs. I, I see double ovens with the microwave above it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did a tour of a new home build in Southern California in the 55 and over building and it had an elevator. So I get in the elevator and at first I got stuck. So the show, the model person was a little nervous, um, but then I got the elevator to go up and it was, you came in the front door, there were stairs that wrapped around. So they placed the elevator right inside that little curve of the stairs. It made sense, right? It didn't use that much of the floor, the footprint. So I, I finally get the elevator to go up and I go to open the door and they brought the railing of the stairs around the top. So I couldn't open the door of the elevator the whole way. Now I'm thinking maybe for the model home, they didn't want people to fall down the stairs. I don't know what they were thinking, but you're absolutely right. When you, when you tour now, you start to look at things differently and you say, okay, you know, this, really may not work. This may not be the solution here. Um, but again, I mean, some of them are moving toward the multi-generational, right? More bedrooms and full bathrooms on the main floor. I mean, some of those features we're, we're starting to see, but for those of us who are impatient in the industry, <laughs> it's not moving quickly enough. Yeah. And I would like to say that that multi-generational thing is is really out there. It's live and it's active. And during the beginning of COVID, I really saw that move from the real estate standpoint of people coming, looking at homes, at open houses and saying, we're looking for a place that our parents can be on the first floor because they're going to come and live with us. I'm working with a new build right now that's about a month away. And it is a man and his new wife that he dated for a lot of years. And it's her daughter, the son-in-law, who are going to take care of them because both of them need 24 seven. The son-in-law has a mother with dementia, so they're taking care of her 24 seven. And then the grandson is going to be there who he's 20 to take the load off of everybody else. And so my job is to make sure that they're set up with some services to be able to come and take the, the pressure off of them every once in a while. But it's really out there, it's really live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you, those, by the way, Rhonda, that story is something that we deal with often. Um, when I go looking at homes for clients, um, even I take a tape measure and we will start, that's like one of the first things we do as we walk in a door, we're measuring because we already know that that multi-generational family needs so many levels of stuff, but I will tell you that the one thing you can get rid of it in that house is like, is those doors wide enough? Because that's something- and it's you... usually the secondary bathrooms that are 24 inches. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But well, our city, San Antonio, where we're at, we're working on an ordinance to have all the builders and remodelers required to put the blocking between there. And it's taken a long time to get that done it's still not done yet we're hoping maybe in the next year or so but that's what it's taking great congratulations really fabulous yeah. fabulous cheers to san antonio <laughs> you and gotta and see you have to see what they're doing in san antonio with um salsa and uh this woman named jane pazzioni um, amazing She's done amazing work in the aging in place and just in the aging pace sector and for San Antonio. And so this board is changing a lot of this um, area and it's, yeah. 
and more cities are going to start to and us as what whatever we do ot real estate agent whatever on this call that we're doing it's us that are needing to change it and you know you and lewis and several others have always are the four you know the founders of this this area and so you know what's working and what's not working it's our mm -hmm. job to like keep the momentum going as yes. as <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm more than happy to to mentor you all and you all can go out and do the work right? that's, yes that's what lewis loves doing <laughs> He's yeah. Screaming it. yeah you all can do the work right but we did drop your email address in um the box both on the live feed as well as here and if people missed anything, what's going to be on YouTube tomorrow, we'll post the link so you'll be able to see everything. And we will add her information over on YouTube so you'll be able to have her information. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask now or forever hold it. No, don't worry. Oh, you can ask later too. Yeah, Amy, um, to, we want to thank you for coming. However, Amy Roberts is going to tell you about next week's uh, yes. guest speaker. Yay. Uh, her name is Tony O'Brien, and she's a wonderful lady. I've met her through all these different uh, senior networking deals in San Antonio that I go with. She is, she's worn many hats. She is right now working as a paralegal for an elder law attorney. She's a mediator. She does oh, every, what doesn't she do? She's worked in a title company. She's, um, so she's going to come and talk to us about mediation and and getting um, mm, important. You know when the families it's, right are getting all. It's there's a lot of conflict she works. that happens um, between families as we age in place. Uh, I'm sure Fritzy's got plenty of stories <laughs> with families. Um, so she's really good at uh, mediation part. This is what she does. So she's going to talk about the dynamics of stuff and what goes oh, on having having those tough conversations yeah. and being prepared yeah, yeah. and how to handle things because we are like sometimes you're the punching bag it doesn't <laughs> whatever profession you're in because you're the outsider you mm -hmm. become the punching bag for those people that are on the inside dealing with it yeah no oh. and she's Sounds got like a, a gentle session. touch to her she's had a ministry background too and she really does have that that nice little gentle touch so people really like her right sounds like great learning well i thank everybody for coming um my name is heather brooks eve hill amy roberts we're part of the aging in place network and we're just here having fun empowering and educating everybody and everybody that wants to know stuff about aging in place Yes. Um, and if there's something you guys want to learn, let us know and we will go find the expert to go bring that in for that's us nice. to talk about it. Um, so we that's what we like to do. We like to network and help um, and pass along all the information. Uh, Fritzy, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank it's my pleasure. Fritzy, I always a good time. Thank you. Always yeah, thank you. Information. This I'm was, looking for this that was grab great bar fun. thing. What? I can't wait to sign up for it. <laughs> All <laughs> right. You just, it's, it's you nice got, to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night.